When the Gau Gates mandibular block was introduced in 1973, interest grew in alternative methods of achieving anesthesia in the lower jaw. In 1977, Dr. Joseph Akinosi reported on a closed mouth approach to mandibular anesthesia. The Akinosi, or the Vazirani Akinosi technique, as it's also called, is indicated when carrying out procedures in either one or multiple mandibular teeth in one quadrant. It's also indicated for procedures on the lingual soft tissue or the buccal soft tissue anterior to the first molar. A separate buccal nerve block is required for surgery on the molars. While this technique can be used whenever mandibular anesthesia is required, its primary indication remains those situations in which limited mandibular opening or difficulty in visualizing intraoral landmarks precludes the use of other mandibular injection techniques. The objective of the Akinosi technique is to fill the pterygomandibular space with local anesthetic, bathing the inferior alveolar, lingual, and mylohyoid nerves. This technique should result in no bony landmarks being hit. It's important to begin with knowing where the anterior border of the ramus is, and that should be palpated, and then the coronoid process noted. The coronoid process marks the lateral border of where you would want to insert the needle, and the needle insertion goes between the coronoid process on the lateral and the maxillary tuberosity on the medial, and the point should be selected in between those two sites. The correct angle is assessed by making it parallel to the occlusal plane, and then the needle is advanced posteriorly parallel to the occlusal plane until you've advanced at 25 millimeters. The needle should be advanced straight back, taking advantage of the arc of the needle and advancing it slightly posteriorly without actually touching bone. For this block, you begin by palpating the internal landmarks, just open slightly. I begin by feeling the coronoid process, and my finger is now resting on the coronoid process. The point of insertion is against that posterior wall of tissue, which lies here. The height of insertion is shown by the mucogingival junction of the maxillary gingiva, and this height is determined here. You draw the line back towards that posterior wall. And in a lateral to medial plane, the medial border is the max, uh, maxillary tuberosity, the lateral border is the tendon of temporalis, and the final insertion point is right in between the two here. So this represents the final insertion point for the Akinosi closed mouth technique. To bend a needle, what you need to do initially is to loosen the cap, and then using the cap in a sterile manner, give it one bend and one bend only, removing the cap to determine the final degree of bend. And with the jaw closed, lips are uh, the teeth are together, the syringe inserts into the insertion point against the posterior mucosa. Once it's advanced in, the angle is corrected. The needle is advanced back posteriorly, 25 millimeters. The syringe should be at the level of the mucogingival junction of the maxillary molar, parallel to the maxillary occlusal plane, and as close to the maxillary mucosa as possible without touching it. The syringe is advanced posteriorly, with the bend in the needle drawing the needle tip closer to the ramus in an arc-like fashion. The greater the degree of bend, the greater the arc. No hard tissue should be contacted, but if you hit bone, it often occurs early on and is due to the coronoid process. This may occur if the insertion point was too far lateral and may be corrected by withdrawing the needle slightly and redirecting it around the obstruction. No pain should be felt during needle insertion. If pain is felt, it is likely due to penetration into muscle, such as the insertion of the temporalis onto the coronoid process on the lateral, or due to the medial pterygoid muscle on the medial.